middle of New Road in Kathmandu stands a modest monument within a small park. This earthquake monument, established 73 years ago, grimly commemorates the devastation caused by the 1934 Great Nepal Bihar earthquake. Kathmandu has experienced 10 earthquake shakings of intensity 9 or greater since the first recorded quake in year 1255. This short video highlights the seismic vulnerabilities of Kathmandu, an ancient city housing several World Heritage Sites and one of the most at-risk cities in the world. Welcome to the earthquake walk in Kathmandu. This row of three-story high buildings is an example of the type of construction undertaken in this business area of Kathmandu after the 1934 earthquake. The seismic vulnerability of these buildings has increased due to subsequent additions of floors without proper consideration of foundation strength as well as due to the incompatibility of traditional and modern materials. Now we're at the intersection of several streets. Around here, the population density is very high, approximately 60,000 people per square kilometer. Old and new structures mix in this area and are used for both residential and commercial purposes. We will now enter into one of the typical narrow streets commonly found in the core area of Kathmandu. Here we can see both traditional and new buildings. In these newer taller buildings, the projections in upper stories are gradually increasing, making the top end reach out towards each other, creating a concrete canopy and essentially kiss. Let's enter into one of the courtyards from this narrow street. These courtyards are a hallmark of the typical architectural style of the core area of Kathmandu. One often sees several of these courtyards connected by a series of small passageways which finally lead to the street. Obviously, this layout would pose a significant obstacle for emergency evacuation and search and rescue. The upper part of this old building has new construction rising much higher than the original two to three stories. The municipal bylaw does not allow this high but it is not uncommon to see buildings reaching upwards of 10 stories constructed in this very narrow and unstable style. Now we will enter into another courtyard. Notice the entrance. Imagine trying to escape through this during an earthquake. Look in front of you. A newly constructed 9-story building with terracotta cladding. Because of the lack of proper connection, this cladding is expected to fall even during a moderate earthquake, possibly injuring people in the street below. Now, let's turn back into the underpass and look at a six-story building. The underpass will be totally blocked by the debris from this building in case of even a smaller trembler. We now enter into a larger courtyard. Look around. One sees how the buildings are vertically divided into narrow and slender vertical strips suitable perhaps only for housing a staircase. Look at the difference in floor heights, poor quality of construction and so on. All these result increased vulnerability. The next courtyard within this larger courtyard is devoted to the work of Guti. A Guti is traditional socio-cultural network of the Newar people of Kathmandu Valley. We will walk further around this magnificent courtyard where more vulnerable buildings are present. We have been making our city more vulnerable day by day. This should be stopped. There in this video gives only a glimpse of a much larger picture of vulnerability that pervades Kathmandu. We see that vulnerability comes from the absence of awareness of people, from the lack of diligence or education of engineers and builders, from the failure of our local institutions to enforce the building codes, and lastly from our inability to remember the lessons of the past. Let the lessons not be forgotten.